Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, time, talent, treasure. Those are the three words that we typically use, that we typically think about when we talk about giving, about being generous. Giving of our time, our time in volunteering and service, whether it be within the church or community or personally, one-on-one with someone else, giving of our time to someone to provide, to help, to encourage our talent, giving of the, the, the wisdom or the skills that we may have to be a blessing or a benefit to others and to the ministry and the work of the church, our treasure, giving of our financial resources that we have to help, to support, to provide for the needs of others, to further the work of the kingdom and the mission of our Lord. Giving of our time, our talent, and our treasure. And each of us individually determines the percentages that we use and how much of those that that we give as we prayerfully consider that with our Lord. One of the dangers when we talk about time, talent, and treasure is we usually refer to it as my time, my talent, and my treasure. And yet we know, as we heard in our readings today, that it's all the Lord's. And as we sang in the song we just sang, we give you but your own. It's the Lord's. It all belongs to him. Dave Ramsey in Financial Peace University uses this example that if I had $1,000 and I went to one of you right now and I handed you $1,000, you know, 10 $100 bills, cash, and you held it in your hand, I said, would you just hold this for me? And you held it, and a couple of minutes later I came to you and said, okay, I, I, thank you for holding that for me. I'd like my $1,000 back. It, it probably would be very easy. It's yours here. Just here's your $1,000 back. But if I give you the $1,000 and I let you hold on to it for several weeks, and then I come back to you and say, hey, I'd like to have my $1,000 back. You probably give it back, but it's a little bit harder because, you know, the longer you hold on to it, the more it's mine. You know, the, the longer we hold on to things, the more we get into the attitude of mine. But it's all the Lord's, everything that we have. In our first reading today, King David, he so wanted to build the temple for the Lord. But the Lord said, David, you're not going to be the one. I'm going to build a house for you. And that house was that through his line would come the Savior, Jesus Christ. But he said, your son will build the temple. But David wanted to make sure that everything was ready and all the resources were there for the building of the temple, as he provided abundance of resources and then called upon the people to give and to be generous in their giving. And they did. There was a huge outpouring of the gifts that were provided for building the temple. And then we have that beautiful prayer of David's that we heard just a few minutes ago as he gives all the praise, all the glory to God and for the generosity that he has given to his people. And then David makes the point, all that we have given to you has come from your own hand. It all comes from the Lord. It all belongs to the Lord. And the Lord's desire is all that he gives to us, his blessings that he gives to us, that they flow through us. That as Pastor Mike made the point last week, that we are to be rivers and not ponds. Ponds hold it all in and get stagnant. Rivers, there's a constant flowing. And the river begins with God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The river begins with God as he flows through us and uses the blessings that he gives us that those blessings be a blessing to others 
and to others and to others, living as rivers in our walk with the Lord. And so as we understand that, then we want to seek to see different meaning to those words, time, talent, and treasure, and look beyond the human value that we so often place upon those things of time, talent, and treasure. Instead, see the spiritual value behind those things. Because the time, the talent, and the treasure are simply a means for allowing the blessings and the gifts of Christ to flow through us and to others. Christ gives us his wonderful gifts. He gives us the gift of his presence. Jesus said to us, Lo, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, said the Lord. Jesus said, nothing can snatch you out of my hand. Psalm 139, if we go up to the highest heights, the Lord is there. If we go to the deepest depths, the Lord is there. There's nowhere we can go, and the Lord's not present with us. He promises that. His presence is with us. His presence is with us as we read his word, as we hear his word, as we study his word. His presence is with us in the sacrament of baptism. His presence is with us in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper as he gives to us his very body and his blood. The presence of Christ, that wonderful gift of his presence with us. And he calls us to to allow his presence to flow through us like a river. And the way we come to other people with our time, the way we come to other people with our talent and our treasure, that the presence of Christ flow through those things to be a blessing to others. The gift of the power of Christ. He has defeated all of our enemies through the cross and the empty tomb. And he gives us power The Apostle Paul says, let us put on the full armor of God as we go out into battle. As we battle each and every day against Satan and his evil forces. And the Lord gives us power. His power. He gives us the power of prayer. The opportunity to be praying for one another and praying for others. What a wonderful gift that we can give to people. The time that we spend in prayer for others, for their needs. The power of God, that his power flows to us and he desires that it flow through us to others. His provision. The Lord provides us with all that we need. He is the one who gives it all. In our gospel lesson today, we hear Jesus say, Don't worry about these things, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. It will be provided. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the other stuff will be taken care of as the Lord provides. Luther, in his explanation of the first article of the Apostle Creed, he daily and richly provides me with all that I need to support this body and this life. He does. And then he calls upon us to use the things that he gives us and the provisions that he gives us to provide for the needs of others. He involves us in his kingdom work of providing possessions to others as we give of time and talent and treasure as we allow that to flow through us and the provisions to flow to others. The gift of his perfection. Our Lord went to the cross for us. He paid the price for all of our sins. And our sins are removed from us as far as the east is from the west. We have been washed 
in the blood of the Lamb. We have made, been made white as snow. And our Lord Jesus Christ gives his perfection to us and calls us to bring that perfection to others, to allow it to flow through us. That in our dealings with others, people will see a difference in the way we act, in the way we talk, in the way we handle the situations of life that they will see the perfectness of Christ as work at work in our lives and see the perfectness of Christ flow through our lives. The gift of resurrection. We have a Savior who lives. We have a Savior who has defeated our enemies, who has defeated sin, death, and the power of the devil, and we have a Savior who lives. And because He lives we live too, and we live each and every day in resurrection hope. Death does not have the last word. The last word is resurrection. This week we have two memorial services coming up. On Saturday for Joan Bubbenheimer. On Sunday for Dorothy Bergen. I haven't written those messages yet, and they'll be personalized. But I can tell you right now what the primary focus of the message, primary focus of the service is going to be through songs and through the word. It's on Jesus Christ and the hope of the resurrection. The certainty, the Christian hope, Christian certainty that we have that our loved ones who die in the Lord Jesus Christ are with the Lord as we await when Christ will raise all the dead. And we will be reunited to live forever in the perfect presence of Christ with bodies that are glorified, with bodies that no longer are affected by sin. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. Christ gives us resurrection hope and that is to flow through us in our relationships with other people. He gives us the gift of the fact that he reigns in the midst of the chaos that we live in, in the midst of the, the challenges and the problems of, of life in this world. And so often it seems like everything is out of control. Christ reigns. He sits at the right hand of God. Not a place, but a position of authority. He is over everything. And he rules through his people through the church, through the power that he gives to us, through all the blessings that he gives to us, and that that reign of Christ is to flow through us to others. And the last gift, the gift of his return. He's coming again. The church has been waiting for 2,000 years, and the church will continue to wait as long as the Lord takes before he comes again. And each day that he takes before coming back again is another day for the blessings of Christ to flow through us and to others. Another day for one more person to come to faith and know Christ as Lord and Savior. The Lord continues to give us time to do the mission that he calls us to do and to allow his gifts to flow through us to others. So that day when he comes, there will be a great number gathered around the heavenly banquet feast for all eternity to live forever in his perfect presence. The gifts that Christ gives to us and he desires that they flow through us. Pastor Mike mentioned the Why Give devotion booklet. If you haven't picked one up yet, I strongly encourage you to pick one up. Daily devotions to read through. And the daily devotions based on these seven gifts of Christ are powerful. I mean, it's things that we preach on all the time, that we speak on all the time about the presence of Christ and the power of Christ, the provision of Christ, the perfection of Christ, the resurrection, his reigning, his coming again. 
and how wonderful it's laid out in these devotions. These marvelous gifts that God gives to us, but then his desire that those gifts flow through us. And the way we use the time, the talent, the treasure that he gives us. There's one quote that really stood out to me. It says, we need to understand that every time we give, from a smile to a million dollars, we are opening the door for Christ to flow through us with one or more of these marvelous gifts. Every time we give, from the smallest to the largest, to what may almost seem insignificant, but it's not. Because every time we give, it provides an opportunity for the door to be open, for the gifts of Christ that he has given to us to flow through us. So why give? So that more of the blessings of Christ can be a blessing to others. As we seek to grow, and we pray that the Lord would help us to grow, and flowing strong as a river, as his blessings flow through us, and as the gifts of Christ flow to others. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.